Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Three, two, one. And here we are, back with my girl. Maybe that is, I just remember that. Yeah, I don't know this too. <laughs> Welcome to Soapbox. I am so freaking excited. We have an opening. Did we're, you guys like it? Was we're, growing. Cool? we're growing and growing every we're getting week. better and better. <laughs> so I wanted to start off the show today because um, with a beauty secret of mine, because I keep getting all of these messages from people asking me what I use on my skin, what foundation I use. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to share my secret. Oh, it good. is called... Oxygenetics. I just wanted to pronounce it correctly. Oxygenetics.com. Breathable foundation infused with oxygen. Perfect for us actors. I saw the commercial. <laughs> Why is it? It's infused with oxygen. It's like everything has oxygen. Oh no 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 no. This is this is what doctors, <laughs> skin doctors, give to their patients. Skin doctors. This is no joke. <laughs> yes. She's totally fucking me. Dermatologists. <laughs> yes, dermatologists. But I said skin doctors because <laughs> dermatologist kind of has like a negative connotation to no, it. No, it doesn't. It does. It's you like go saying, to a dermatologist I'm and going get skin to the bo- I'm going to the Botox <laughs> lady today. <laughs> but anyway, it's really healing for your skin. If you have any scars, if you have any acne, <laughs> if you had a procedure done, it's very, very healing. <laughs> She's had too much coffee. I don't know why I think this is so funny. <laughs> Watch, when she's wearing it and she starts getting asked what she's wearing, she'll be a believer. Sure. Anyway, sure. when we come back, we have Crystal Chappelle. I don't think I need to say anything more than we have We've Crystal, got Chappelle. Crystal Chappelle. <laughs> we'll be right back on T Radio V. <laughs> no offense to you, don't waste your time. Here's why. Because I'm happy I'm alone if you feel like a room without a roof Because I'm happy I'm alone T Radio V Radio in TV Radio in TV Senator Preston had a press to have stroke. The stroke has left him partially paralyzed on the left side. He wants you to report on your grandfather's condition? Among other things. Just how close are you to my grandfather? Are you going to take his place in Washington? She was meant to be in politics, just like her father and her grandfather. You were standing in her way. You're dangling the, the U.S. Senate seat like it's some prize. We have a problem. Hello, Father. It's all there. You'll be discreet. Discreet is my middle name. <laughs> that was great. That looks really, really good. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Thank there's yeah. there's just so much that I want to talk about. So we will come back to Beacon Hill. Okay. I want to start off at um, the beginning with you, if that's okay. Sure. So I know that in 1989, you had a day player role on All My Children. I did. And one of my dearest most loved men in the world, Maurice Bernard. <sighs> yeah, he took me in and under his wing and made me who I am today, acting-wise. I believe that. So tell me, um, you said that he actually helped you with your first scenes. He did. Well, the, I was. I had nine lines, and I was uh, working with him. And uh, there was a you know a, a, a director that was has sort of a questionable personality. <laughs> 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 
such a nice thing to say. Yes. Beautifully put. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, may he rest in peace. You know, oh. Let's be. Um, but still, it was it, he was coming down on me and, and was about to come down on me in, in, in a way that, you know, and Maurice just stopped him in the middle of this. He said, don't, don't do it, don't. And he backed off. And I, I've never forgotten that because an actor doesn't have to do that for you. That's right. true. And they usually don't. Right. And we know that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. right. He's, he's a first-class actor and a first-class human being. Yes, I, Maurice I can be on our show. He's going to be on. Now, I have a funny story. I know that you started on Days of Our Lives, and we'll go back to that. But um, you were on One Life to Live when I was on General Hospital. And I had just been on General Hospital. And um, Vanessa Marcel comes up on stage and says, have you seen One Life to Live? And I'm like, no, what's going on? She's like, they put Crystal Chappelle in a men's suit. Like, <laughs> really? No, no, she's like, really? Like, do they think that's going to hide that woman's beauty? Yeah, right. I mean, you yeah. can put her in a bag and you can't hide her beauty. And I remember that was the first time I ever heard Crystal Chappelle. Oh, and I was like, wow. I got to go check this out. And so I saw it, I'm like, oh, it only makes her more beautiful. Yeah. Oh, my God, did you like my wimple? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I didn't wimple. know that you played a nun, a juggling nun. <laughs> I had to come in for juggling lessons. <gasps> Are you serious? I'm not good at it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hard to have to retake and retake and retake. I got two balls up in the air, that's it. Oh, that's so all you need, honey. On that note, <laughs> your ex husband, you've been quoted to say that he actually propelled you to get into acting. Is that correct? Yes. How did that happen? Um, you know, we were high school sweethearts, and, um, you know, we would get married young, and things just weren't, um, things weren't panning out the way I expected to, you know, and he had a wonder, he converted to Catholicism because I was very Catholic at the time, and I was going to be a stay-at-home mom, I mean, I, that was going to be my life, and I was going to be perfectly happy with it, because that's what you think when it, you're 22, and, right? and raised a Catholic, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, uh, he just told me on our honeymoon about an indiscretion that he had, and I was but it only went so far. So I'm like, so you just touched wow. her boot, right? <laughs> so I'm trying to get the Okay, story. honey. <laughs> and I spent the rest of my honeymoon with a monk. <laughs> what? This I is was, fantastic. This, I was walking up the waterfalls of Ochos Rios, and, and, and there was this lovely monk with his brother, and then we ended up hanging out together. But um, <laughs> through a little chanting, make sure right. candles, you know. A year later on our anniversary, he told me a little more, and I'm thinking, so you touched your boob, and then you did what? <laughs> Oh, and um, and it, by the second anniversary, I, I, I kind of figured it out. Right. Yeah, and I went back to school. I, I auditioned for a play at the University of Maryland, Baltimore, and that's what I've been doing ever since. So you're an East Coast girl. I am, yeah. And how did you land your first role on Days of Our Lives? Um, well, you had done Santa Barbara. Before, I did right? Santa Barbara. Oh, that's Barbara. right. Didn't you die of an overdose of I was a drug ice? dealer. What? Oh, I was that a drug dealer. kind I was of ice. Drugs, so. <laughs> A nun and a drug <laughs> dealer. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, and I got to work with Anne Martinez and Marcy Walker, who were really great people, too. Um, but the casting director saw me working on Santa Barbara and called me in for Carly. Aww. And that's how so. she made history. I loved Carly on Days. That was back when I was like watching every single day, and I was just like, oh, oh, she's little pretty. pretty. Beautiful. She's so beautiful. Oh, <laughs> and then God. when you were on, did, they did that movie, right? Where they did like an hour long Days like of Our Lives movie. Yes. yes. And I watched that, and I was like, she's like, it, it was before ER and everything, and you were like this trauma doctor or whatever. And this, I just, I don't know why I remember this so specifically. And I was like, God, she's so good as a doctor. Oh my God, those those lines used to scare me. Anything medical, can I just right? say headache? <laughs> Is that a headache. Give him some aspirin. Nice. Yeah. I've always, I've always thought that. I'm like, gosh, you know, I don't know if I could do like Grey's Anatomy or anything like that because of the dialogue, like I. I mispronounce every other word if I could make myself yeah, up. Yeah. yeah. You know, With like, face. like dermatologist. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tough it's a one. Skin doctor. Coming from a woman that doesn't understand oxygen on the skin, I will let that slide. Okay. <laughs> I want to go straight to the perfect art of imperfection, my life so far. I mean, we could talk about more of your career and all of that, but I just find this. <clears throat> such a courageous move. I think it is so brave. And I find it inspiring, to be completely honest. And one day I dare to do something like that. 
But since you have, I, I'd love to know what provoked you to tell your story. Um, several years ago, well, really before I turned 40, <laughs> which was a while ago, um, <laughs> uh, I made a, a promise to myself. You know, I think especially having kids, you just kind of feel like, this is it, folks. You better live it now and, and try things and be courageous. So I, that's pretty much what I set out to do. So I'm just going to try and find my truth and live it and, um, and be honest about it. And when we got into Guiding Light and Talia, the feedback I got back from fans is what propelled me to make Venice. Correct. Right. Seeing these you know, characters on Guiding Light and then having it go away. But their stories, they, they were so brave in sharing their stories with me and they were very raw. Some were very beautiful. But a lot of very raw uh, stories about being gay in the United States and, and, and other places around the world, you know, because at that point we have social media and we've got emails coming in and people are sharing these things with me. So the same thing happened with the book. Um, I, I don't be, I, I'm not really comfortable being up on anybody's pedestal. I tend, I'm very clumsy, I fall all the time. <laughs> and, um, but also they were writing me about other things that they were doing as a result of, you know, just their lives, their childhood, their oppression, and um, I, you know, there's obviously happy times around all of those other chapters. It's a very compact book, but um, I wanted them to know that I related and and have a place to reach out and feel comfortable sharing their story with me, and that's that's what happens. So I'm, I'm very happy with the results. But I find that very beautiful. Um, I read. Um, she didn't try to sugarcoat anything to make herself look better. When she was a diva, she took responsibility for it. When life knocked her on her ass, she did the work she needed to do and then got back out there and tried again. What work did you do? Oh, just, I mean, I was a, I was a, I, I was a diva in the worst possible aspect of the word um, because I was young and I was insecure and usually, usually when you have that kind of bravada and that kind of ego, you're just hiding a lot of insecurity and a lot of fear and probably pain underneath it all. So. Um, I went into therapy when I was on days the first time. That's and, and I, I thank Corday Productions for that every single day of my life because I could not have afforded therapy had I not been working there. And it actually I was going I was going all the time. I was seven and a half years in therapy and uh, you know fell off a lot. But you just you just keep trying to get better and understand yourself and understand your truth and live it. First of all, it's so refreshing that you can be honest about going through a deeper stage. I think that all of us have our insecurities and I know that when I have been my most intolerable it's been when I have been most insecure sure. mm -hmm. and I think there is an element to growing up insecure and then all of a sudden getting all of this attention and everybody telling you how great how beautiful you are mm -hmm. and you not believing it mm -hmm. and then using it to kind of um, sell yourself because you don't believe it yourself so right. it, it, it's it's a very um, it's the opposite of what people usually think. They, exactly. think you, they think you're so full of yourself and, and you're going, I can't sleep no. at night because I'm scared to death to wake up and walk on set the next Arrogance day. is the mask that you wear for yeah, how yeah. deeply insecure you well, really are. I, I completely relate to the um, kind of being insecure. I, I know that I read some quotes from your book where you uh, were talking about you know having some kind of instability or inconsistency in your childhood that kind of created all of that. And trust me, I've done my years of therapy too. I've been there uh, it, and it... it the good thing is that it teaches you kind of how to teach yourself. You kind of become an autodidact. You know, you, you kind of figure out how to make the world you want to live in because nobody else is going to give it to you. But at the same time, you're always concerned about that because no one taught you how and you're not sure if you're doing it right. And like, sure. do people notice that you don't really know what you're doing or all that kind of stuff? Drew Pinsky was just on, Dr. Drew Pinsky was just on Adam Carolla show. And he, uh, he had a, a great, uh, uh, quote uh, where he said that um, uh, there are three three markers of a successful person a deep sense of self-worth an inability to grasp delayed gratification and deep insecurity and I think that is something I see in all the people yes. that I love yes. <laughs> because I totally relate to that yes. do you agree with that I, I do I, I um, you have to know your self-worth um, mm -hmm. you know but and that's a search you know it's a treasure hunt so uh, you know but that takes falling on your face and yeah. and, and and feeling the pain, you know, you kind of have to get to it. But yeah, there's there are, there's always some insecurity. I had somebody ask me not that long ago, don't you ever feel like all these projects you're working on is just going to go away one day? And I'm like, I said, sure, but I, I've done them then. And then yeah. I'll go on to something else if that's what happens. 
it's I'm not hanging my right. self worth on the well, success 